For those of you who've been wondering, yes, the Weathering Waves closed beta test has been confirmed to have gacha in it. Now, you cannot spend real life money to get characters that you want in this closed beta test, but you will be able to do it in the global launch. But in this video, I'm going to explain how the gacha system works. I'll talk about things like the banners, the character rates, the character rarities, how to get gacha currency in this closed beta test. And I'll also share some concerns that I have with the gacha system at the moment. So let's go! Now, for those of you who don't know what gacha actually means, let me give a brief explanation. Basically, a gacha system is a system where you pay in currency, be it real life currency or in game currency, if the gacha is in a game, and you will get characters that are in the gacha system at random. And if you are lucky, you will get the character that you want. If you're not so lucky, you will end up with a lot of characters that you don't need and you need to keep putting in more and more money until you get what you want. Within Wuthering Waves, there are two rarities of characters. There are four star characters and there are five star characters. Four star characters are marked with purple and five star characters are marked with gold, as you can see here on screen. Four star characters are characters that you can get relatively easily in the gacha system. You can get them within 10 pulls, but you cannot get a five star character as easily. You need to do a ton of pulls in order to get a five star character. Now a list of some four star characters that are confirmed in the game are Yang Yang and Chishia and examples of five star characters would be Jian and the Rover, the main character that you actually play in the game. Within Wuthering Waves, the gacha system is called modulation. Now, when you click the modulation button, you'll be taken to the banner screen. Now, my thoughts on the banner screen is that it's a little bland. Of course, the font that everyone has been talking about is really not working here, but we'll leave my thoughts for the gacha system for another video. But on this banner, you can see all the characters that you can wish for. Jian is a five star character, and every other character that you see there is a four star character. Now, the rates for gacha are as follows. For 5 star characters, you have a 0.8% chance to get a 5 star character and you have a 6% chance to get a 4 star character. Every single time you do 10 modulations, so that's 10 pulls on the modulation banner, you are guaranteed to get a 4 star character and a 4 star weapon. You need 90 pulls in order to get a 5 star character. And if you lose your 50-50, then the next 90 pulls will get you the featured 5-star character on the banner. In this Wuthering Wave CBT, in order for you to do a modulation, you require a modulation key code. And the modulation key code is basically the main gacha currency for character pulls. Now, I don't know if it's different for weapon pulls. I don't think it will be, but you require modulation key codes in order to do pulls on the banners. Now, you can buy these key codes with tacitrite vouchers and also maybe with real life money and a premium currency that we do not know what it is yet because we cannot spend real money in the CBT. But you can get tacitrite vouchers in the open world when you open chests and when you kill some enemies. And you will need about 1,500 tacitrite vouchers in order to buy 10 pulls. So all in all, you need about 15 to 16,000 tacitrite vouchers in order to be able to do up to 100 pulls. And I think around here, I can very safely transition over to some of my concerns about the gacha system in this game. Now, the first one is about the rates at which you can get pulls. Now, I don't mean the gacha rates themselves. I mean like how quickly you can actually get Tassotrite vouchers. Now, you need to get at least 1,500 to 1,600 of them in order to be able to do a temple. And every time you open a chest, you get between one Tassotrite voucher to about five Tassotrite vouchers. That's like the most I have seen. And you can only, from every single bit of footage I've seen, get them from opening chests. There is a similar drop that you can get from enemies, but those ones are called Tassotrite coins. And I don't think you can use Tassotrite coins to get Tassotrite vouchers. I could be wrong on this. If I am wrong, I will update this video probably in the description, but it seems like it's going to be very, very difficult for people to get 10 poles. And that's 
going to be scary, especially if you're a PGR player, because a lot of PGR players love PGR, aside from the combat, because the game is quite free-to-play friendly. So with how it looks right now, it doesn't exactly look free-to-play friendly. I'm just saying this right now, I have not played this CBT because I am not in the US, neither am I in Canada, so I cannot play this for myself. But it does look like it's going to be quite difficult for a free-to-play player to get pawns easily. Now this highly depends on how frequently they're going to be releasing new characters and how many chests and quests in the world can actually give you these Tacitite vouchers. Another thing is if the Tacitite coins that we get from enemies can also be used to buy these vouchers, then it could probably serve to aid in mitigating this little bit of a problem that I see with the gacha rates. Now another problem I had was if you look in the polling animation which you're seeing right now, you have to swipe on the screen in order to start the animation. Now this animation has an advantage. The advantage is if you clicked by mistake, maybe you didn't want to do a tempo then you accidentally did a poll, you can just back out I think without having to do a poll at all which is very very nice. But then on the other hand if I want to do multiple temples, so I want to do like a hundred poles at once, having to swipe each time is going to get very, very, very annoying. Now this was never a problem to me when I played PGR because this animation is also in PGR so it's not anything new, but I think it's going to be annoying. Now personally I have never whaled on any game so I will leave it to the whales. If you're a whale in PGR then please let me know in the comments. Is it annoying to you when you're trying to do your 10 poles and you have to swipe each time? I don't know, I, I feel like that's going to be a problem. These are just basically some loose cannon thoughts that I had when I saw it for the first time. As we continue to get more and more information about this gacha system, we'll be able to know if it's actually free to play friendly or not. But from what I'm seeing right now, it does not look free to play friendly. But I think that's where I'll end off this video. Thank you all so much for watching. Make sure you're following me on Twitter and Instagram for Watering Waves news and updates as soon as they come. And Make sure you're subscribed to the channel so you don't miss out other videos like this one. And maybe if we're able to get our hands on the closed beta test or another beta entirely, I'll actually start to upload some challenges and guides for the game. Also make sure you're subscribed to the second channel where I will be uploading story gameplay of this game. But yeah, I think that's everything. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.